introduce yourself to the camera. Yes, I'm Dan, I'm one of the events managers at Soup Kitchen in the Northern Quarter. How long have you been here in the Northern Quarter? In the Northern Quarter. Myself or the venue? Um, well, how long have you been here yourself? I've been here for a year. Um, essentially, amongst other things, I get paid to uh, listen to music in a club, and you can't really beat that. What have been the best bits of your career so far, and the worst bits? Um, worst bits of the, uh, worst bits of the, uh, worst bits of the, worst bits of the, worst bits of the, worst bits of the, worst bits of Manchester. I mean, that was like place where you would obviously all 
bit well in your order and then charlatans and uh, uh, I suppose Oasis come later on and uh, uh, I suppose it's Barrel Carpet and uh, um, oh, Stone Roses. It's very rare you get a town that produces as much really good quality as Manchester does. Manchester of music for me is very very important again because it's like uh, it was sort of the beginnings of something that was really what is it classic classic style and uh, something that will be remembered for years to come. A remarkable individual called Tony Wilson in Manchester who worked for the local television network as a serious news reporter but he had a passion for music and he had a passion for the punk movement and believed that it was important. Um, Malcolm McLaren, who managed the Sex Pistols, was a kind of Bengali character to, to Tony Wilson and Tony wanted to make the same thing happen in Manchester so he organised the club night. Of 
Manchester needs to go for the last 20 or so years. It's a big city, there's lots going on. Culturally now it's, uh, it's more interesting than it's ever been before. And um, you know, I think maybe people get inspired by that. But when it comes to Manchester, there's only the music. Yeah, Northern Town, music's cool. Friends argue that Liverpool's got more good bands than Manchester, I take the Manchester side over that one. So the Stone Roses, the Happy Mondays, all that baggy stuff when that happened, when I, when I was growing up and stuff, it was the music that I was into, it said something to me about my life. That's a Smith's lyric. Yes! <laughs> Uh, the music that they constantly play says nothing to me about my life. Apart from those, they were really good. My teenage years, um, New Order was the band that I really was into. I really liked New Order, really liked um, Depeche Mode, Ultra Rocks. Um, and it was just so exciting, the whole thing, you know, getting Peter Savile and record covers. What else, Visage? I love the records that he designed the covers for. New Order enjoyed the music and all that. Blue Monday was sort of like such a big, a big track for me in respect of sort of like the, uh, the, 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 the bit of sort of like it was like dance but indie at the same time and um, I really like dance music and uh, or techno, techno music and uh, so it sort of like was the happy medium of getting them at both uh, styles of music in one so it was very very very, very important to me. Yeah, I think it was a real treat being born in Manchester, living in Manchester at the time when you had a band that was just amazing. You know, and, and not just kind of knocking out tracks, but great artwork and a nightclub as well. It was just really special and important to the city. A big part of that will be the music scene. I mean, I'm really into Manchester music and music in general, but the music in Manchester is something that kind of encapsulates the sort of music that I like. I moved to Manchester because I'm really into the Smiths actually and the Stone Roses, the Happy Mondays and all that, all my favourite music when I was growing up. The first thing you do when you start liking things and things, look back to see where it's come from and look back and find out that a lot of it originated from Manchester. I mean, gosh, in the 90s, I mean, of course, Mad, uh, Mad Manchester, I mean, that was like the place to be with obviously all the, well, New Order and then Charlatans and uh, uh, I suppose Oasis coming later on and uh, uh, I suppose it's Barrel Carpets and, and uh, um, oh, Roses. It's very rare you get a town that produces as much really good quality as Manchester does. Manchester of music, for me, is very, very important again because it's like uh, it's sort of the beginnings of something that was really, what is it, classic, classic style and uh, something that will be remembered for years to come. A remarkable individual called Tony Wilson in Manchester who works for the local television network as a serious news reporter, but he had a passion for music and he had a passion for the punk movement and believed that it was important. Um, Malcolm McLaren, who managed the Sex Pistols, was a kind of Sengali character to, to Tony Wilson. And Tony wanted to make the same thing happen in Manchester. So he organised the club night. And, um, and I passed out and said, so Mr. Wilson, can I do something? And um, that was the beginning of the factory. And uh, 78. And it went on for another 14 years. Um, which was kind of exceptional, really. It, <clears throat> it never became a real company. Um, it was referred to as a record company, but it wasn't really a record company. There were no contracts. Um, there, was, there were no advances. There were no contracts, there was no commitment to anybody to stay, um, and fans did as, what they wanted, as they pleased. And they worked within the capabilities of, of the cash flow. Um, and so they had, they had kind of freedom, they had autonomy to do as they wished. Um, and the, 